Yo, we're back with another video. And this one's on something called Moments. And I think that's chapter five in your, uh, in your Indexel textbooks. So let's get going with it. First of all, we're gonna talk about what moments actually are. Now, a moment can be described as the turning effect that a force has on an object. And the best place to think about this in real life is on a seesaw. Now, if you think about a seesaw, say we've got the man standing there on the end. Um, the man is obviously going to have his weight pushing down on the seesaw, like that. And what's it going to do? Well, it's going to cause the seesaw to tip downwards on the end that he's standing on. Now, imagine that there was no ground, right? So the ground is what's going to stop the seesaw from going any further. But imagine there was no ground. Then the seesaw would just keep spinning in that direction there, around the pivot, around the triangle bit. And what that means is he's going to spin it. Hopefully you can, you know, you all know which way the clock turns, right? He's spinning this in the clockwise direction. Now let's look at a different scenario where you've got maybe the man and you've got a bear. Now the bear is obviously much heavier. So the bear is going to be pushing down with a much greater force on this side than the man. Because he's heavy, obviously. So what's, what's going to happen this time? Well, this time the bear is going to tilt the seesaw downwards. And again, imagine there was no ground here, then what's going to happen? The bear will, you know, have the seesaw spinning in this direction. And what does that mean? That means that this is tilting in the anti-clockwise direction. So I'll put that there. There we go. So the bear's caused it to tip anti-clockwise, whereas the man has caused it to tip clockwise. Now, Initially, you know, you might be thinking, well, I'm not actually sure which way it's spinning and how to tell which way it's spinning. So have a look at this. You can use um, your pencil, use, use your hands and stuff to actually tell which way um, it is spinning. So let's say you've got this scenario here where you've got your seesaw and you've got a force pushing down on this side of the seesaw, right? Here's what you could do. Grab your pen, place it as if it was the seesaw, put your hand on the pivot point and then slide your finger down on the force and you can see it's there turning. Hopefully you can see that that is the clockwise direction. We'll do the same with the other one. Grab your pen again, use it as if it was the seesaw, and then run your finger down the force, and then hopefully you'll see it's tilting in the anti-clockwise direction this time. And that's how you tell which way um, it's tilting. Perfect. Now, how do we calculate a moment? There's a formula for it. So a moment, uh, is calculated by whatever force is acting and you multiply it by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. So what do we mean? Well, if we have a look at this setup over here, the pivot point is this, the triangular bit again, right? Because it tips around that point. So I'm going to put a little dot on that point there. And the force is the weight of the man. So the weight here, 200 newtons is what we've got. And the perpendicular distance, meaning that that distance has to be at a right angle to the force. See, so you can see that there. So we can simplify this, right? We can simplify this and treat the man as like a little dot over here. We can draw a force coming downwards. There's 200 newtons and a distance of two meters over there. Remember, there's our 90 degrees. So it's really simple to work out the moment. All we do is the moment equals the force, which is 200 newtons and times it by the perpendicular distance as two meters. So we've got 400 Newton meters. There we go. And now what we need to do is we always need to give a direction. So which way is it turning, right? Because I don't know, if I just see 400 Newton meters, does it mean clockwise? Does it mean anti-clockwise? Who knows? So we've got to add that in. So that there, we can tell is going to be in the clockwise direction. Now, you will see in some textbooks, um, they'll actually give you a sign. They wouldn't say clockwise or anti-clockwise. They'll just go, oh, it's positive or negative. Usually, the clockwise direction in maths is given with a negative sign, okay? So a negative sign equals clockwise. So you may just see this as minus 400 Newton meters. Okay, makes sense? Great, fantastic. Now let's look at the bear, right? The bear at a distance of two meters again, but as you can see, his weight is 400 Newtons. He's a lot heavier. So we'll simplify this again. We'll treat the, uh, the bear as a little dot there on the end. 400 newtons going downwards and two meters as the perpendicular distance from our pivot point. There it is. So now to work out the moment that the bear is creating, you'll need to do the moment equals and the force, which is 400 newtons this time, and then times that by two meters, 
So we get 800 Newton meters. There it is. And remember to give your direction. So the direction there is going to be anti-clockwise this time. And again, in some textbooks, you're going to see just a sign put in front of there. The sign that you'll see for the anti-clockwise direction is a positive sign. Okay, so positive. So you're going to see just normal 800 Newton meters like that over there. Now, what if the man was stood bang at the middle on the pivot point? So hopefully, you know, you go down the park and do this yourself if you want. Go stand in the middle. The seesaw is not going to tilt anywhere, right? Why is it not going to tilt anywhere? Because if you think about it, the man is standing right there on the pivot point. The force going downwards is 200 newtons. Now, if we're trying to work out a moment here, we'll put moment equals. The force is 200 newtons. But now the perpendicular distance from the pivot, well, the man is standing on the pivot. So there is no distance, right? The distance there is zero. So zero meters. And then you can see what we're going to get is zero Newton meters. There is no turning effect. So what we need to understand is if there is a force acting at the pivot point, its moment is zero. So you don't need to consider it. OK, so make sure you remember that. Write it down. Highlight it or something like that. And then let's move on. Now here we've got um, just two, two diagrams here. We need to work out the moment created by these two forces. Uh, you've got one which is six newtons over here and one which is eight newtons. Now you can see the distances we've got from the pivot points are perpendicular. We've got 10 meters there, seven meters there. So this is all fantastic. Nice easy calculations. Uh, we'll go with for the first one. The moment is just equal to the force, which is six newtons times by the distance that's 10 meters. So altogether 60 newton meters. Don't forget your direction. So which way is it turning? This one here is turning clockwise. Or if you want to use a sign, you should probably go with negative 60 Newton meters, like that. And then going to the other diagram there, we've got eight Newtons this time as our force. So I'm going to go eight Newtons times that by the perpendicular distance is seven meters this time. Seven, eight, so we've got 56 Newton meters. Direction is anti-clockwise. There we go. Um, or you can just leave it as positive 56, as I mentioned earlier. So that's that. Again, don't be fooled. You just tilted these a little bit, but you can see the distances are still perpendicular, right? So don't be, don't be fooled by that. So let's just quickly calculate these. We've got for this one here, our moment equals. So the force, which is 15 Newtons, and we're timesing that by perpendicular distance of 7.2 meters. Bam, bam. Okay, punch that in the calculator real quickly and see what we get. Uh, 15 times 7.2 and we've got 108 Newton meters. There we go, perfect. Direction again, which way is this going? This one hopefully you can see is going anti-clockwise. I'm just going to put anti there. Or remember, if you're putting a sign, you can just put it as positive. That's that, done. The other one, uh, we're going to have a force of four Newtons and a perpendicular distance of 4.1 meters. So the moment created here, put moment in there, there we go, uh, is going to be 16.4 Newton meters. The direction, so this time, this one here, I think it's also going anti-clockwise. So be careful with that one. Anti-clockwise, you could leave it with just, with just a positive sign again. Okay, perfect. Now, where it gets a little bit more tricky is where you've got uh, these here. Now, what you can see is our pivot point is here, P, but the distance nine meters is not a perpendicular distance to this force. So now we've got to do a bit more work here. So let's just quickly move this uh, a little bit. Um, move it into the center over here. Because what we're going to need to do is extend the line of our force like that. Because then what that allows us to do is then create a perpendicular distance. There we go, in red, see? So you can draw that red line in there with a nice 90 degree angle. That there's our perpendicular distance. So we need to find that out. How are we gonna find it out? Well, what we've just created is a right angle triangle. There it is. So if we draw that right angle triangle out, there we go, we can just do a little bit of trigonometry to find out what that actually is. So let's fill these in. We've got nine meters over here. 30 degrees over here. We're interested in finding out this side here. So we'll just pop some labels on real quickly. We've got our opposite over here, adjacent and hypotenuse. 
So hopefully you can see we're going to be using the sine formula, right? Or the sine ratio. So we've got sine 30 would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. There we go. So to find out what x is, we're just going to be doing 9 times by sine 30. Bang. So you can type that in the calculator. Um, I'm just going to fill that in over here. So 9 sine 30. There we go. And then to calculate our moment, we can do it now because we've got a perpendicular distance. So we can go moment equals and our force, which is 15 newtons, times by a perpendicular distance, which we've worked out as 9 sine 30. And that there will be in meters. Uh, bash that all into the calculator and uh, we get 67.5 newton meters. There it is. And don't forget, give your direction again, which way is this going? This is actually going in the anti-clockwise direction. So anti-clockwise, or remember, positive sign. That's the other way to do it. Okay, wonderful. Another one very, very similar to it. So uh, let's just shift this again into the middle. Remember this distance, it's not perpendicular. It's at an angle of 60 degrees this time. So what did we do last time? Extend our force backwards. There we go. And then we use a red line again to create a perpendicular. There it is. Bam, bam. So we're interested in finding out that distance over there. Make a small sketch of that triangle. There you go. This, this, and this. You've got 60 degrees here, x over here, 14 meters there. And so to find x again, we're going to need to do some trigonometry. So we've got our opposite. We've got our hypotenuse over there. So again, it's the sine ratio, right? So we're going to be using sine 60 equals x over 14. So we'll need to do 14 times sine 60, which would equal x. There we go, so there's our distance. So I'll fill that in on our diagram. We've got 14 sine 60, there it is. And now to work out our moment. So the moment now would be moment equals um, our force, which is 20 newtons this time. And then multiply that by the perpendicular distance, which we said is 14 sine 60, and that's meters. Okay, let's multiply that all. So we've got 14 and then sine 60 times that by 20. And we've got a total of 242 point, And we've got 487, something, 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 something. So we'll go to three sig figs this time. So to three sig figs, we'll go with 242 Newton meters. There it is. Um, and then the direction, which way is that going? This way, I think it's clockwise this time. So we'll go with clockwise. Or if you wanted to put a sign on it, you could put negative 242 Newton meters, like that there. Okay, great. One more to go. Let's get this one done. Um, shift it into here again. And you know, again, you can see it's not perpendicular to the distance again, right? We've got this weird angle, 140 degrees or something like that. So. We should draw in a perpendicular. There we go. There's our perpendicular. So this time, yeah, be careful. The triangle's a little bit odd looking, but there it is. So we've got that, that, and that. Right angle in here. We've got the hypotenuse this time as four meters. Now they gave us this angle on the outside here, 140 degrees. It's a straight line, so we can go this angle on the inside must be 40 degrees. Simply enough. Again, let's put some labels on. So we've got our hypotenuse over here and we're interested in finding this one here which again is going to be our opposite so we need the sine ratio one more time so we're going to have sine 40 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse and therefore times that across we've got 4 sine 40 there we go so we'll fill that in here 4 sine 40 and so to calculate our moment now here it is We've got a force of three newtons this time. Multiply it by four, sine 40, and that's in meters. Oh, there we go. All right, let's multiply that. So three times four, sine 40, and we have 7.71345, something, something, something. We'll go to three sig figs one more time. Three sig figs, we're going to go 3.71 newton meters. Okay, good. There it is. Direction, that's going to be clockwise. And there it is. So remember, if it's clockwise, you can put your uh, your negative sign on there as well, negative 7.71 newton meters. There it is. Fantastic. Okay, so there's a few examples. Hopefully you've understood that. 
and now it's time for you to have a go. Here's some practice questions. Uh, pause the video and then um, attempt these four and then I'll catch you in a couple of seconds to go over them. Okay, time to go. Let's get through these answers real quick. Now, number one and two should have been super easy because you were given the perpendicular distances. So for the first one, all you needed to do was five newtons times by three meters. So that's 15 newton meters, and then just give your direction. So the direction for this one would have been uh, anti-clockwise. So let's go anti-clock there. Anti-clockwise, there we go. Or you could just leave it with a positive sign, as I said earlier. Now for the next one, we've got eight newtons as our force. Perpendicular distance, six meters. So we've got 48 newton meters. And then give your direction. So the direction this time um, is um, going to be clockwise. There we go, that's going around clockwise direction. Um, and so with this one, you could have gone with minus 48 Newton meters. That's also a possible answer. The next one, so three and four, we would have needed to create perpendicular distances because we don't have them. We've got some angles here, right? So we'll need to create a nice right angle triangle there. And we need to look for this distance x. So let's redraw this triangle, maybe down the bottom here. So look at that, that, and that. There we go. So we've got 15 degrees here, and we want this side. So we're going to pop some labels on. We've got our hypotenuse there as uh, 5 meters, and our opposite over here. So we're going to be using the sine ratio again. So I'm going to put sine 15 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. There it is x over five, so five sine 15 would give us uh, the length there of our perpendicular distance. So I'll pop that on the top here, five sine 15. And so to find the moment for number three, we would have needed to do our force, which is 12 newtons, and then multiply that by our perpendicular distance, five sine 15. So we've got to be careful, punch that all into the calculator, so 12, and then 5 sine uh, 15, and that comes out as, oh yes, so 3 sig figs, 15.5 newton meters. And the direction there, that's going uh, anti-clockwise, so I'm put anti-clockwise just underneath it. And again, you could leave that with just a positive sign, and that's good enough too. Now, the very last one, let's create a triangle straight away. There's our perpendicular distance, which we needed to find. I'll mark that with X again. And let's go and make a quick sketch of that triangle. So there it is, that there. This one in here would have been 50 degrees, because it's got to add up to 180. And we've been given the hypotenuse of three meters. We're looking for this side again. Ooh. So it's going to be sine one more time. So sine 50 is equal to x over 3. 3 sine 50 is equal to x. That's our perpendicular distance. Uh, let's fill that in on our diagram. 3 sine 50. There we go. That's meters. You can do the same for this one if you want. Put meters on the end. And now to find our moment, uh, let's quickly do this calculation. We're going to have our force, which is 9 newtons, and times that by 3 sine 50, and that's meters obviously okay let's whack that all in so three uh, nine and then three and then sine and 50 there we go that all comes out as 20 point we'll go to 20.7 to three sig figs there newton meters uh which way is that going <clears throat> that way is actually going clockwise isn't it so there we go that's clockwise and so if we're going clockwise you could leave it with a negative sign as well if you wanted to go for that option so there we go hopefully you have all of those answers. If you have, well done, fantastic. If not, go back, review it, and see um, see where things went wrong. Now, um, if you've got all of that, that's great. I think we're ready to go on to the next um, video, which is about resultant moments, is what it is. So resultant moments is where we've got um, like a pivot, and maybe we've got two forces acting, and what we need to do is find out overall what's happening. So that's what resultant means. You're gonna work out what's happening overall. So which one of those moments is winning, is it going to go anti-clockwise or is it going to go anti-clockwise? Okay, so that's going to be out. Uh, make sure you check it out. And um, until then, take care, stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video.